Right now, uh, Asia is in, in flux in so many ways, so many issues, so many new risks, new phenomenon, and yet you cannot understand what's happening unless you look back. Exactly. And we need to understand. Exactly. We need to because you've got the number two and the number three most powerful economies in the world. China, it looks like, will maybe eventually overtake us Soon, as the most yeah. powerful economy in the world. So, so, yeah, we definitely need to understand them better. And why do we not understand them better? Well, one thing that happened after World War II is the Red Scare in the United States. And, of Step course— backward. Well, it was a, it was a terrible, uh, dangerous movement in the early 1950s, led by you know J McCarthy. Joseph McCarthy. Um, and um, one of the things that happens is you have a lot of Asia specialists, especially China specialists, who have connections. They did interviews with Mao. They're connected to Mao in other ways, to the Chinese Communist Party in other ways. And uh, these guys get into big trouble during the Red Scare. They're fired from the State Department. There's a big purge of, of, of Chinese, of, of communist sympathizers in the State mm. Department in the late 1940s. And the most important intellectuals who are, uh, who are knowledgeable about China, they get booted out of the State Department. Just so, for having had contact with it. Exactly. Well, they're, they're seen as friends, you know, uh, friends of the communists. Yeah. Well, but if you're going to, fellow, if you're going to have a relationship with, right. with the communists, you have to, to some extent, well, be you friends. Have, yeah, you have to, you know, so you this have is to really backward thinking it's, to exercise yeah, it's, them it's, that it's, way. It, it's so, what, so what the Red Scare does is it, it pulls that expertise out of our official agencies, out of the CIA and out of the, out of the State Department. And so to a certain extent... That's long-term damage for us, um, and uh, you know, and, and we've. Well, I don't know that we've recovered from that, because those are those are long views, deep views of China, of the changes in China, of the changes in Japan. But especially China, is a place where we don't really, uh, we don't have a strong sense. The the kind of the the you know, the political classes do not have a strong grasp of of what's happening in China. It's so hard to fashion a relationship with a country that you, you've it's, demonized, it's, and at the core of your thinking yes, about it, you treat it, it exactly, as a demon. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, so it really behooves us to, uh, to learn more about China. Now, there was an article in the New York Times recently, uh, a series of articles called China Rules, and that actually was pretty good. I mean, I, I thought there was a, it was a series of articles on the economy, on strategy, on the development of China since the since detente in 1972. So those were good. Uh, those are good, good, kind of a good primer on what's you know, happening. You know, in China. We, we need an Asian president. We, we need somebody and who. Or somebody high up in the government some, who yes, is Asian who exactly, can speak to this. Exactly. They can say, now, now, boys. No, that's right. Uh, you that's know, right. this is, they're real people. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, I, no, I don't think right. Trump is doing that. I, no, I think no, Trump no. is demonizing, and no. even if he uh, shakes hands and puts his hands on Xi Jinping's shoulder, he yeah. doesn't mean it, yeah. and it, it's visible. And, yeah, and it's so important that we understand what Xi Jinping is doing right now in China. And Xi Jinping is building a cult of personality in China, and this has not happened in China since Mao, since the time, the time of Mao. So this is an old habit of, of Marxist leaders, and uh, but Xi Jinping is taking this up and doing this. And this means that uh, it could be a one-man show for a while. Yeah, and which is not, you know? not good. No, it never, it's, it never works well. It's not good and, and actually could end up hurting China, actually. But the, your point, though, is that um, in the communist <laughs> world and in the Asian world, you can have a, a very strong leader. It's, it's part of the culture. Yeah. There. And from time to time, that's what they have. They have very strong leaders who, who get there by being by yes, nasty. That's right. That's um, right. But what's it's interesting the, it's is the force you, of it's the force of history, and it's the lack of true Westernization. In, in China. Yes, and in yeah. Western governments, including the U.S., right. um, we haven't had that. Right. We haven't had you know dictators. And no. Like that's right. And strong men. Yes. Uh, what, I think what, what I find interesting is that Trump would like to be a strong man. Right. And he breaks the mold on that. Yeah, but he, he has no idea how to do it. I don't think he really would, actually. I, okay. I, I don't think so. From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you again, John. Sure, Jay. Happy holidays. <laughs> happy holidays. And happy holidays to you as well.